bit of a fiasco with Tesla yesterday. It's also like left parts of their tools. Oh my God. I'm telling you. New vlog looks absolutely hurt and hurt. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. I'm trying to get better. And we didn't want that to be the case. They've left tools in the car. Oh God, this build complete. It also looks like somebody just dragged their entire hair across. That's all right, Jeff. Welcome to episode three of the weekly vlog. This episode, I talk about why I quit alcohol six months ago and the main benefits of doing so that I've noticed, and how Jeff Bezos has tried to take down Minicorp. Mr. Bezos, I've got some news for you. I also just want to say a quick message to everybody that has watched and subscribed over the last two episodes. I really appreciate it. And more than that, I really appreciate all of the feedback, all of the comments, as I'm trying to get this better and stronger every single episode. So a massive thank you. Let's get into this week's episode. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Monday, it's bank holiday Monday here in Ireland. And I have just arrived at the office and decided to go for a nice little walk to stretch the legs and some daylight exposure. Uh, before I have one task I need to accomplish today, and that is to migrate some Amazon Web Services hosting from one part of it to another, which I'll explain more on later. Um, for a German client of ours, their hosting has to be within, within Frankfurt, within Germany, um, for one of their privacy or, or contractual laws. So I gotta get that done. And then off to a family birthday party. Let's go. Let me explain exactly what needs to happen for this AWS migration. It's not crazy complicated, but I also want to try to explain these things a bit better. Okay, so on this side, we have our current implementation for the client, which is we have one, two, let's say a load of different web servers that all go back to a database. Let's put DB here. And these are all web servers. So whenever Johnny, Samantha and Timmy all want to use their little mobile apps to grab something or to do something on this app, then the request goes over here and into this and all gets processed. Then over here, there is a, let's say a migration server or a importation server, not gonna spell. But our client then sends files into this, which then pushes it all into the database. All makes complete sense, no problem. But this is on an old technology at the moment called AWS OpsWorks. And what we need to do in order to stay modern, efficient, and up to the latest technology is move everything over to something called the Beanstalk. I have no idea where people come up with these names, but it's Beanstalk. So what I need to do today is we need to move or replicate all of this environment into Beanstalk and then set ourselves up as a little test person and as a little test client and start to import data and to make sure that everything that was working here is also working here and we set up different environments and so on. So not massively complicated, like it's really just replicating the entire environment in a new technology in Amazon Web Services, but has to be done, so let's go. For a little bit of a check-in. Been at this now for two hours, three hours, and I swear to God, whoever created AWS, like it is just, you need to sacrifice three lambs and a goat in order to get anything to work. Documentation is like you need to have a scientific degree in physics, black holes, and I don't know, something else that I don't have, a rocket science degree or something because it's just impossible. Like, all I want to do is just move those things from what I showed you earlier from there over to there. And now I'm just, I've now got this feeling of, I just hate AWS. And so I'm going to try a few other suppliers that provide the same infrastructure aspects, but needs to be validated from a region point of view. It needs that these need to sit in Frankfurt or in Germany or the data those. So yeah, that's where I'm at. Not giving up. So, didn't get as far as I wanted to get 
it was a bit of a mission failure to be honest but what I've noticed is there is a infrastructure provider called DigitalOcean which has a fantastic dashboard and everything we need in order to host this application and potentially more compared to other services we've used as being AWS, so Amazon Web Services, or uh, Heroku, which got bought by Salesforce. But DigitalOcean looks pretty damn solid, to be honest. I wanna do some more tests, so we'll do some load tests where we try to fire as many different requests at different applications as possible to make sure that it's able to withstand that type of a brute force. And if that all works, then great. And then the final thing is, on that actual application itself, on the the German one, we need to adapt the application because some of the web concurrency that it uses, so how it's able to manage to take multiple different web requests at the exact same time, um, is not configured in the most optimal fashion. So we need to rework that, and then we can deploy everything, and then we're good to go. So not exactly a success for Monday, but have learned a lot and have also got a solid plan for the next, for how I'm gonna tackle this, this puppy or how we're gonna tackle this puppy, so let's go. It is now, so I got myself a cheeky 3FE coffee, lovely bit of filter, which is one of life's many pleasures. And now I'm gonna head over, it's five past one, I'm gonna head over to the family lunch and enjoy that. Chat to y'all in a while. Ladies and gentlemen, the first comment has just come in. So this is from Jamie Young. Jamie, thank you so much, you're a legend. We gotta celebrate like the first ever comment on the vlog. Love it, Brian, keep it up, keep it weekly, which the editor would be key to workload and introduce some projects that you can share details on where possible. So that is the plan, I know right now I do oh, it's the medical client, or it's a client based in this space, or whatever it might be. But there is some legality around these things. When we work with different companies, some companies do not want the public to know that an agency is building their tech. So for instance, imagine that you're a startup, or your, your core product is the technology that we're building. If that's the case, and you're raising investment and so on, you want the intellectual property, the IP, to be in the company. So obviously that's what happens. When Minicorp builds something, we transfer all the intellectual property ownership rights to the company that has hired us. However, if they are raising further investment or are looking to raise more finances in the future, for the investor to know that they have the technical capabilities in-house is a big point for them. So we also work with our clients to ensure that they're hiring a CTO or what type of technology specialists or engineers they should be hiring and everything. So in a lot of different scenarios, we're actually not legally allowed to publicize the work that we have built, although some of it is flipping awesome and I wish we could talk about it a lot more. but. I'm currently working on that and trying to get some companies to allow us to do it, which which is going to be the case. So we'll be able to share more on that. Uh, the extra layer of behind the scenes would be great. And are you using the Pocket for all footage? So pretty much, yeah, this is the Pocket, the DJI Pocket 2 that I'm using right now. Shout out to Daniel Asheville, man's a tropical people, um, who I've seen that he uses it. And I'm like, the quality looks perfect. And it's the form factor where you can just chuck it in your pocket, hence the name, um, really easily. And when I'm out in public walking around, I don't feel like a complete crazy <laughs> recording with it. So it's grand. Shout out to Jamie. Thank you so much for the comment, man. And um, onwards. Just arrived at the lunch. Let's go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Tuesday. I think, I think Jeff Bezos is mocking me. I think Amazon has said, do you know what we're gonna do? Is we're going to give Brian Kenny lots of stress and make sure that it is 
impossible to do that infrastructure update. And I think Jeff and his team all got together in Amazon Dublin and said, let's make sure that he can never deploy that app. That's all right, Jeff. I'll take on that challenge today. And today, I'm not gonna stop until that app is deployed in a beautiful new environment, in a beautiful new home, where it can live and thrive. Shalt mock me, Jeff. So, on the way to the office, gym session done, haven't felt best, haven't felt great over the last couple of days, but it's good to be back in the gym. Feels tasty, feels strong. Time to get my ass to the office, get caffeined up, get fueled. Let's go. Many hours of banging my head against the wall and trying to get this working. Mr. Bezos, got some news for you. Look at this, build complete. All pushed to production. All good to go. That was a... Uh, that was tricky. I'm glad that I, that I managed to fix and to get all of that solved. So that's one thing done. Next up is that my wonderful wife is actually on her way here and we're going to be going for a very fancy lunch. So, I got taken for an absolutely beautiful meal in a restaurant here in Dublin called Patrick Gibo's, and it's a two-time Michelin star restaurant. Why? And a big thank you to my wife also for bringing me, obviously. Well, you see, um, six months ago today, I started on a bit of a new journey, and that journey involved not drinking any alcohol. and. It's not that I'm completely gone off alcohol for the rest of my life, uh, but what I had always noticed is that it tended to get in the way of a lot of different aspects of things that I wanted to do. So I made this promise to myself. I said, um, Brian, you kind of really want to see what's on the other side of your potential. And in order to really understand what you're capable of or what your potential is, you kind of need to focus on doing the best work you possibly can. So six months ago, I said, I really want to figure out what that is. And so I decided no alcohol. Um, I decided going to the gym. I decided being as disciplined as I possibly could and consistent. Like, don't get me wrong. I definitely still, you know, I'm not, I'm not the most disciplined person in the world. I could definitely get better, but I wanted to really see what I was capable of doing. So I said, when I look back at, even if I just take Minicorp, for example, Minicorp is about seven years old. And during that entire seven years, I've never really switched off. And what I really want to see is Probably the best way for me to progress as a person is to do two years of full, solid, committed work where you're trying to produce the best work you possibly can, exceptional work. But then at the end of those two years, taking two to three months off, as in completely no work, nothing, just broad thinking, high level, 30,000 foot thinking. And starting to figure out whether, you know, am I going in the right direction? Is there other things I need to think about? Am I doing the things that I really want to? Because time is always running out, as we all know. So I'm kind of, I'm six months into one of those two year long journeys at the moment, and it's been a ton of fun. I think I've done some of the best work that I've ever done in the last two years. It's definitely been a bit of a, like this, you know, like there, there's been, what do they call it? Like a dead cat bounce in, in investments where there's a strong realization on where you are, what's worked, what hasn't worked. Then there's a, okay, that's where we are now. We need to fix all the things. And then once we fix all the things, now we're finally seeing the, the culmination of all of that work starting to come up and up and to the right. So I'm very excited for the next six months. I think they're going to be unbelievable. But that's the reason. So a big thank you to Lee and I really appreciate all the support as always. 
Okay, let's go. Yo, yo, yo. It's Wednesday. It is 20 to 3 and I haven't really uploaded anything for the vlog today or recorded anything. I apologize. My energy levels for the last 24 hours have just plummeted and even my whoop score is like 23% or something and uh, it's all in the red. I went to the gym yesterday. I shouldn't have. I've been pushing it on absolutely all angles. But I think one of the more challenging aspects of running small companies is the fact that you have responsibilities. You've got responsibilities to your clients, to your staff, to your people. And when you're not feeling 100%, it, you know, not everything can't just grind to a halt. You still have all these things that need to get done. And so you're trying to balance your recovery together with um, making sure that you don't drop the ball on multiple different avenues and aspects. I had like a ton of really strong engineering challenges too where I was trying to get a that cluster, that exact thing from, from Monday where um, I conquered it on a new infrastructure called DigitalOcean. But it turns out that at the very end, there was one last thing that needed to happen where that server needed to communicate with another server over something that's called SFTP. And for some reason, DigitalOcean does not allow different servers to communicate when they're in that little app platform service. So today I had to find something called Render, uh, test it out, make sure that it's able to take the size of the app that we're trying to deploy in it. Uh, by way of resources and performance and scalability and so on and it does which is fantastic so I kind of feel like I've really cracked the back of that one now uh, it's gone on far too long but it's a part it's a part of the thing I think sometimes there's problems in engineering and they can be very difficult to estimate or something really ugly will just rear its head and you got to get through it and solve it so I'm glad that I've cracked the back of it but now I'm going home. I'm going home to rest my little head for a while, try to get some recoup time in. And then I'm gonna come out Thursday with a new lease of life, hopefully. Cheers, chat to you guys tomorrow. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Thursday and I'm in the office. I'm in Clever Groat's office. It is five past seven, early start this morning. But I have some jobs I need to take care of later on today. So I'm trying to get a bit of a jump on the day. Got some really great work done yesterday on that server migration and the infrastructure migration. That's all ready to go. The only thing that's left is moving the production servers across and we need to get our clients to confirm a time slot as to when they would like that to occur so that we can get everything scheduled and ready to move, but we're ready to go, which is fantastic. Now it is, it's gonna be a day of building the world's most amazing dashboard. So. We have a client where they have multiple different touch points that the customer moves through. So one is in Webflow to Typeform to all of these different third-party services. What we want to see is just a really simple dashboard where it's how many users get to each stage in the funnel so that we can then start to make some really accurate, educated decisions on what parts of the marketing campaigns we can influence and start to push left and right and stuff as well. So that is next on the agenda. So head down for the next couple of hours. And then I gotta, I gotta head over uh, to Tesla to get my, my windscreen fixed. Let's go. Running through all the YouTube algorithms and starting to Watch back episode number two. It's a little, uh, little taster there. Look at this. Is what I'm stuck in traffic is search for uh, business needs and, and different things we should be doing or thinking about in, in trend growth. I'm telling you, it's all coming together. But the next thing we need to figure out is how to do some YouTube shorts uh, where you need to be able to create evergreen content that anybody can search for and making sure that we understand how to post for the 
YouTube algorithm and everything in between is the next, the next structure. So Keith knows all this stuff inside out, but I'm very much green on what to do. I just hold the thing and talk to the lens. Let's go. Just arriving. I'm gonna get this crack fixed. <laughs> oh my God. The original Tesla Roasters. After all of the fun in Tesla, it turns out that it's going to take at least till 5 p.m. for the car to be ready because they need to have the window cured or for it to dry. So myself and Pete scrap some nice lunch at Milano's and now it's time to get back to the office to head down. Let's go. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Friday. 20 past seven. Just arrived at the office. Bit of a fiasco with Tesla yesterday, so they replaced the windscreen. All done, fantastic. But there's like a panel that's missing from underneath where the mirror is. They've left tools in the car, and it also looks like somebody just dragged their entire hair across the windscreen inside, like there's smudges everywhere, which sucks. So I've texted or kind of uploaded all of that to the app, and let's see what they come back with. But for now, it is time to grab, time to grab some nice coffee. Let's go. So every morning, I try to get a nice little stretch of the legs. Um, so get out just before I hit the desk. Get out for a nice little stroll, which is what I'm doing right now. Um, but yesterday, I didn't get a chance to kind of record the second half of the day, but I had two client calls uh, between four and just after six which meant that Lee had to go and get the Tesla. But anyway, um, it's crazy. Some calls, depending on the amount of people that are on them, they can kind of shoot off in different directions with tangerines and tangents and all different things and people wanting to cover different topics and things. But here are some of my top tips on how to have the most productive meeting possible. So how do we create the most productive meeting possible? For me, it encompasses a couple of things. So first of all, I use a piece of software called Cron that helps me to schedule meetings super easily. So here, I've just taken two days without any other meetings in it so that I'm not sharing my entire calendar. But let's say I'm about to have a meeting with somebody or I would like to call a meeting with somebody and I wanna give them a couple of different options. One of the best things I can do in Cron is first of all, I can set up my different uh, time zones. So I have Dubai, New York, all within the same view. So the next thing I wanna do is I have a person that I wanna schedule a meeting with, so I'll just hit S. And when I hit S, I'm able to select different times that I would like to propose a meeting with them on. So I'm gonna go, uh, let's do 9 a.m., let's do 1 p.m., let's do Sunday at 6 p.m., and let's do Sunday at 8 a.m. And what it does is creates a little Snippet of text here, would you, would 30 minutes, well, I kind of, this is my default text, but would an hour during any of these times work for you? And it includes a scheduling link. So I can, first of all, give this meeting a title. So I'm gonna say, uh, discuss proposal, for instance. And I can also set the time zone of the meeting if I want and the length of the meeting. So I'm gonna say one hour. So that automatically updates this text. So now they have all of their options, Saturday uh, from 9 a.m. or from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. And what I do is I hit create here. It blocks off those different areas in my calendar with no appointment, but just to let me know that I proposed those to somebody. And I can copy this text and then throw it into an email. But let's have a look at the actual link. So if I copy this link and I'll just show you what the actual person would get. So they would click on this link and then it essentially creates these two uh, dates where they can now select the date that they would like and then they can send an email. I'll go, okay, Brian, plus test at me for hq.com. And that'll go off and schedule, sorry, <laughs> that'll go off and schedule that meeting. Um, so if I go back to my calendar now, I'll see that they've accepted this and all of the other ones have disappeared. Super easy. The next tip 
is making sure that you schedule the right people in a meeting. When, when you're thinking about a meeting, there is a reason for the meeting, as in, are you trying to get them to agree to something? Do you need information from them? Do you need um, to present something to them? There has to be an actual reason for the meeting. And within the reason for the meeting, there's an outcome. So from the outcome, who are the people who are going to make that decision? So let's say I'm having a meeting with a client about some new changes that we would recommend to their app. So first of all, I would go and create a meeting, let's say. Um, changes, or let's call app name, uh, feature discussion. The next thing is to add in the most relevant people to that meeting. So I know that the person who is going to make the decisions on this is going to be Keith. And then who also should join is, let's say, Jack, and let's say myself. Now, what we know is that the more people that are on the meeting, the more that you're going to get input, and it may not all be relevant input. So my recommendation is that you just drop this down and click mark optional on the people that you are inviting, but they don't necessarily have to attend. We know that Keith is going to be the one who's going to make the decisions in this meeting, and so having him there is crucial, but the other two, it's great to have them there, but you know, if they weren't to join, it wouldn't be the end of the world and the meeting could continue. Don't over invite, like don't invite the entire thing because some people see the calendar invites and go, oh God, I have to go to that. And then when they're at the meeting, they're, they might think that they need to present their opinion or to give their thoughts on what the entire thing is, which slows down the meeting, drags it out, where realistically it's, hey, this is the thing I need what do you think and try to try to wrap up the meeting as soon as possible so i'd highly recommend you check out cron and also start making making invitees or participants optional where possible hope that helps chicka boom boom yeah let me hear you say way up way up it is time to get out of the office been a long day just created the youtube thumbnails for Episode two, it's going live in two days on Sunday, which I'm very happy about. The edit is, it's got that je ne sais quoi. What I'm trying to do is just get maybe, oh. Oh. if you play music when you're doing the YouTube videos or when they upload, then I think YouTube gives out to you or something, or you get, I don't know what happens. Anyway. New vlog looks absolutely fantastic. It has a je ne sais quoi, as I said, and the reason being is that I'm trying to get 15 to 20% better every single week, if I can. So I'm learning a ton about YouTube and learning all about it, and I think the things I need to do is get more structured when I'm actually talking. Like, each day, what am I doing? And starting off with that, and then kind of showing how it's all happening and then actually structuring out the day rather than just randomness. So I'm trying to get better. I am getting better. It's now time to get home. Need to upload the YouTube video. Need to box off some emails. Need to hang out with my family. Let's go. So since getting my car back from Tesla, number one, you can't like it. They put a pin to make it drive. And number two is so this thing was just kind of hanging out. And then if you look under, under here, you'll see that there's like a whole chunk missing out of the mirror, which is a bit mad. And then finally there is, oh, it's down in here. I've also like left parts of their tools. And then my, this yoke, which is used for the car park is all broke as well. So all in all, Tessa, yeah, like, I actually had to pay money to get the screen because I wanted to get it fixed faster than my insurance was going to be, which meant I had to pay like 700 quid. And the overall service is not top notch. I think they definitely could improve. Um, but yeah, at least it's done. These have got a fixed window. Although there's all marks all over the window too. Alas, I've, I've uploaded all these photos into the Tesla app to kind of let them know the story. And let's see what they come back with. 
Let's go. I'm on the road again. Also, did you see this? Like, they've got like a little compartment. So I use the DJI Pocket 2 for the majority of the vlog. And in here you have like your, this is the wide angle lens. And then these are two little things that you plug into the DJI if you want to connect it to your phone. It is an amazing little device. So awesome. It is now 7 p.m. Things for me have gotten a little bit progressively worse. So I haven't felt well over the last week, but it's starting to really hurt and hurt in my kind of lower, let's see if I can get this down, lower it like down here, which when I Google, Google is saying there's a good chance that you like, you may have appendicitis or something. So I'm gonna go to the Leia, to the health clinic and see what they gotta say. Hopefully it's nothing. So, I am just out of the doctor. Good news overall. So, nothing to worry about. I think everybody in the house was freaking out a little bit, thinking that it might have been something to do with my appendix, and we all hear the war stories, and we didn't want that to be the case. And the doctor was basically uh, checked all organs, checked everything, and they're like, okay, what's changed in the last while? It's like there's been a lot of, well, there's been a, a, a change in my gym, there's been a change in the amount of calories and protein I have to eat and everything, and they're like, we think it might be related to that, and your kidneys are fine, your organs are fine, everything is fine. Look after yourself, drink plenty of water, try not to eat a crazy amount of protein, and you'll be grand. So, good news. Woo! And that, ladies and gentlemen, is it. That is the end of the vlog for this week. I gotta go and record my outro tomorrow, but other than that, thank you all very much. That's it for Friday. Good morning, good morning, good morning. It is Sunday and I am back in Clever Grove's offices. Great to be back. I need to record the intro and outro for the vlog, which is what I'm doing right now, um, but what I do is upload all of the content over the course of the entire week all up into Google Drive for the editors and for the people in Clever Grove to actually be able to chop it up into something that actually makes sense. But reflecting back on this week, it's been a pretty crazy one. I've been down on the energy and down on the overall health, although everything is perfect now. I actually feel like I'm bouncing back on my whoop. Where's this guy here? is now telling me that I'm like 80% or 90% recovered, which is savage. Gonna be back in the gym next week and back at full health, which is amazing. So I wanna say a big thank you to everybody for watching this episode, if you made it this far. Absolutely love the bones of you. And click here to subscribe, click here for last week's episode, and click down here for links to where you can follow Mini Corp, Clever Growth, and all of the different things. Thanks a million, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode as much as I've been as much as I've enjoyed recording it. Have a good one. See you next week.